So the Battlefront Scarif DLC released, and like all of the previous Battlefront DLCs, there are new vehicles, new weapons, etc. But this time round, there is something truly special, something unique that we haven't seen before. Which is the U-Wing Gunner. The U-Wing is, in my opinion, the best vehicle they've brought to Battlefront post-launch by far. And unfortunately, whilst it's incredibly fun, it's also incredibly overpowered. I have a load of great gameplay where I was literally carrying my team pretty much through an entire game of turning points and infiltration. The U-Wing can pretty much handle anything and it even comes equipped with a shield ability and a missile jammer, which makes absolutely no sense to me when you consider just how powerful the gunner is. So today we're going to see just how overpowered it is, and take a hard look at what nerfs and changes will probably have to be made later down the line in the next Battlefront patch. My name is Connor, and welcome to Star Wars Central. So, Rogue One is out, and my review is on the way. I want to make sure I cover everything without spoiling the movie for anyone who hasn't seen it yet. So the video will be half and half, the first half will be spoiler free, and the second half will contain spoilers. It's an easier way of doing it than making two separate reviews. Also, I've got another Star Wars lore video coming out taking a look at what the Death Star's first kill was, both in the canon and in the Legends universe. It's a really cool topic and it makes sense because Rogue One is all about the Death Star, so I'll be uploading that probably after my Rogue One review. Anyway, let's get started with today's video. So just how overpowered is the new U-Wing Gunner? I'll let the gameplay show you for the most part. Firstly, the splash damage on this weapon is insane. I was getting a lot of double kills and triple kills around the objectives. And the fire rate of the U-Wing is also very high, meaning you can quickly lay down a lot of damage over a very large area. I used this to great effect by focusing on the control point in the turning point game mode and the uplinks in Walker Assault. Granted, this will get more difficult as people learn to place down squad shields and actually shoot at you more, but from a pure damage perspective, the U-Wing is incredibly powerful. It does take a few runs to get used to the way the U-Wing banks and turns around the map, meaning you have to constantly adjust where you're aiming, especially if you're trying to keep up with moving targets. But once you get used to that like I did, you can pretty much apply full damage to anything, as long as the physical terrain of the map doesn't get in the way. The only thing really holding you back is your cooldown. A few times I got caught out and overheated the gun, which is kind of annoying, but again, I'm honestly surprised it didn't overheat sooner. For the most part, I was able to consistently stop firing just before it overheated, and be back to killing Imperials within a couple of seconds. So to sum it all up, is the U-Wing overpowered? Yes. Will it need nerfed? Probably. The thing is, we won't know just how overpowered it's going to be until at least a few more weeks. People are still adjusting their playstyles. And more importantly, people are getting better at the U-Wing itself. We've still got to see how the player base adapts to this new feature first. But even if players choose to adapt to the U-Wing in large numbers, equipping ion torpedoes to take it down, all they're going to do is make it more difficult for them to win the ground game. For example, the Rebels get to pick whatever loadout they like, but instead Imperials are heavily encouraged to carry an ion torpedo, which means in effect they'll be severely weakened against infantry. However, I'm hoping players do learn to take the Ion Torpedo, trust me, being weaker on the ground can be overcome with skill, but allowing a U-Wing Gunner to go pretty much unopposed, unchallenged, is very, very foolish. I'm sure you've noticed in some of this gameplay here, the U-Wing is definitely not something you can ignore. So, moving on, I guess the real question here is how would DICE go about nerfing the U-Wing? because I'd say it's very likely we're going to see some rebalancing in the next patch. Personally, I've got about three simple changes to the U-Wing that I think would help bring it in line. The first change I would make would be to the overall damage of the gunner. If we bring that down slightly, most of the other issues such as splash damage and accuracy are actually a lot easier to handle. I'm not talking about anything crazy, maybe 5 to 10%. Enough that it takes maybe an extra shot from the U-Wing to kill a player. This is because in its current state, it's far too easy to pick off full health players pretty much from their spawn. Now to clarify, I'm fine with easily killing people at objectives, it's a timed vehicle. 
it makes sense that it would perform this way, but in Battlefront at the moment it's just too easy to use it to spawn kill, which really is what's making the game hard to enjoy for Imperial players. Moving on, the second change I would implement is to make the TIE Striker power-up far more aggressive to U-Wings. At the moment in Battlefront, if an Imperial grabs a TIE Striker, it sometimes attacks the U-Wing. I've picked up TIE Striker power-ups where it completely ignores the U-Wing and just doesn't do its job. If you're gonna make the TIE Striker this weak against ground, then at least make it a good counter or harassment to the U-Wing. The U-Wing even comes equipped with a shield and a missile jammer, it seems like it's designed to be harassed by the TIE Striker. But right now, the TIE Striker in its current state just doesn't seem capable of doing the job. So overall, just make sure if a U-Wing is in the air and a TIE Striker power-up is used, that the TIE Striker doesn't just go after a ground target, it focuses on the U-Wing first. And finally, the last change I'd make to the U-Wing Gunner would be to remove its shield ability entirely. If it's going to have a missile jammer, fair enough, it's temporary and only extends its lifespan slightly. But when you think about it, the shield is kind of overkill. The shield can negate damage from the TIE Striker, from ground fire, and is just way too overpowered. Imagine this for a second, a snow speeder with a shield, a missile jammer, and the damage potential of the U-Wing gunner position. And not to mention, this hypothetical vehicle would circle the map constantly going past the enemy spawn. Now that you put it in these terms, apply it to the U-Wing, and that is basically the U-Wing. It's just an insane combination, and I personally think the shield should be removed. Of course, it's very unlikely anything as major as that is going to be changed, and the most I'd expect from the upcoming patch is simply a damage reduction, or a reduction in the cooling effectiveness of the gunner itself. Ultimately though, we need to find a way to reduce its overall effectiveness while still allowing it to keep its position as a game-changing vehicle. I'm fine with it being able to carry games, so long as it's not making life hell for players on the other team. Anyway, that's it for today. If you learned something new or just enjoyed the video, then a like and a comment is very much appreciated. Also, be sure to tell me down below just how overpowered do you think the U-Wing is? Thank you guys so much for watching, I'll see you next time, and may the Force be with you.